going live on YouTube. And I'm going to open up the room as well. Okay. Room is open. Are we live? Yep, we're live. All Everybody right. Just, uh, we were just talking about, uh, it's me, Cassandra, and John. We were just talking about 16th century fashion, <laughs> fashion trends. Uh, um, well, well, we're just talking about what we wear yeah. most of the time. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is yeah, pretty John, conversation. Where's your ruffled collar, John? Yeah. I left, I left it. He's upstairs. getting it starched to me. All right. While we let the room fill up, I actually, I have a question. Is there like any type of painting from, I don't know, the past couple hundred years that you would like not want in your house just because of the materials you think? Huh. You know um, what I'm saying? Like, it just seems like there just so many crazy chemicals have been used over, I don't know. I feel like there'd be like a 1960s. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say that there's probably some like installment sculptures that are made with some shady materials that I wouldn't feel comfortable with. Yeah. yeah. Something Julian Schnabel's done, that type of thing. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, part, part of his thing was, you know, the deterioration, those plates, you know, on the walls. If, if you don't know who he is, Timmy, he's... Uh, um, he's he direct he directed Basquiat and did all the, oh, the okay he's it directed all he directed and did all the paintings for the movie um, wow. wow well hey everybody um we're here yeah we're here hey. we're go um okay. please, find the, please find the chat the chat seems very quiet I'm surprised nobody's using the chat uh oh, wow. shoot us a message I was like is the chat broke um all Thank right cool shared. <laughs> couple first time participants coming yeah, in. Yeah, cool. Got some first timers here. Let us know if you're a first timer. Um, start off by be sure when you use the chat, don't only send it to hosts and panelists, send it to everyone, um, unless it's a complaint. <laughs> um, all right. I'm gonna, we're going to, you're here early enough to catch the intro. Awesome. Great. Well, if you if you just joined, you're in the right place. So you say boom on time. <laughs> nice. All right. Hi, everybody. This is John. I'm here with Cassandra Loomis Kim, Timmy Trayvon. We have a few more coming in, I believe. Bill's going to be late. Um, uh, people will be trickling in. Yeah. Um, a uh, couple of things. Welcome. If you're if you're new to us, we are going to do three poses tonight. Um, we used to do four. We decided to uh, switch up the links. We're going to do two 20 minute poses and one works out to be about a 35 or 40 minute pose at the end. Um, I think it's I just like the format better. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to finish one drawing a little bit further. Tonight, we are drawing Fury Road. Our reference comes from Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, Tom Hardy. Nicholas Holt, Charlize Theron, and actually Charlize twice. You have the option of either one on the end. I like that the last two have been like duplicates of some type. That's been great. I, I think it's fun. Um, and then, um, it, it, and if you are new to, new to us, after your drawings, after the pose, post your work to, I think I have it in here, right here, at Illustration Isolation. Uh, hashtag illustration isolation on Instagram. Right. Theron. A and then we will come in and uh, we'll go through it at the end of the night. We spend about 10 minutes going through all the work and just looking at and kind of ooing and aahing. It's like watching fireworks. It's fun. Um, so with that said, I think we're ready to go. Sweet. I think we are. I mean, T Terry's in the crowd, so I'm gonna. We'll be. I heard a voice in there. I assume it's it's like <laughs> Terry's wandering around the room somewhere. Uh, 
I'm going to, I'm going to add the link to the chat to the photo reference and we're all set. All right. Super fun reference, by the way. Very fun. And Timmy, you missed all the compliments for the Met Gala theme last week. No kidding. Really? That's great. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, we were really on, we were really uh, on point with that because like, like within, within the hour of us doing that, Lil Nas X released his new album, <laughs> <laughs> which I, I just thought, wow, we're, we are marketing geniuses. <laughs> no, I, I've really been enjoying following that. I immediately went out and bought the album. So yeah, I know. I know you did. <laughs> John. I bought it in vinyl. Yeah. John doesn't stream anymore. Uh, yeah. I'm going to turn off my video. Here we go. We're going to see how big. big. Hey John, that just makes you even more of a hipster if you're buying it on vinyl. Yeah. I was just going to tell you, John, that's like pretty on point. For yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was born at night, but not last <laughs> night, guys. Um, yeah. I, I, I was aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> um someone asked any specific uh, materials we need whatever you want to work with like use it i i had a week early on when i would used crayons and it was really fun so whatever you got use it somebody said this is all new should we have started john john gets started early we we come in this room at like 5 45 and the second john joins he starts drawing so you haven't missed anything. He's just been working a little bit longer. Got to warm up. Uh, so we've also, we've got uh, Terry Brown on the panel. Hey, Terry. How's it going? It's going, uh, it's going very, very well. I came in through the back door because for some reason the uh, invite came in that way. So, but I'm here. Doesn't matter. That's great. In other words... Timmy, he figured it out. He figured it out. <laughs> there are things that geezers learn, learn to do. <laughs> yeah, Terry, you're an important part of the team. Yeah. Terry, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty darn well. Um, harvesting my last tomatoes, uh, enjoying the sun going down too early. Um, but it's okay. Good, good time of year. We're, uh, oh my gosh, I love fall. I'm so ready for this. Yeah. Been following, I'm not ready some, for it. been following some interesting threads on, on, on Facebook. One that came up today was a, a copyright issue with the um, with Marvel Comics and Spider-Man, or Dave Spurlock put out. And of course I can put a, a snide response to it, but for those of you who are listening in, um, uh, the C in the circle is your is your lifeblood. You got to know about it. And uh, unfortunately, at this time of the illustration world, they do not have a uh, a strong um, a political action committee, should we say, that can uh, respond to industry issues. So we'll see how this one's going to turn out with the originator of the Marvel character, Spider Man. <clears throat> So Cassandra, yeah. let me ask you, I know it might be similar as weeks before, but do you mind kind of walking uh, the audience through what you're doing? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, so I've got cardboard because um, it's what I have flying around all the time. And I seal it with GAC 100. So that makes, it means that the paint will just sit nicely on the surface. And then now I'm working in acrylic and I'm just painting the silhouette first in a mid-tone and then I'll start to work into it. Okay. So. Um, we, we were kind of just talking briefly about archival issues. <laughs> and, uh, people, the uh, artwork that's been on uh, substrates that maybe aren't the most sustainable. Um, but yeah, I, I had, yeah, to make it just to go full circle, I kind of asked Cassandra, um, like, what responsibility with your work do you feel for it to, you know, not change? 
once completed, right? Mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot that goes into your work, including the frame. Yeah. So I, I try to make it as archival as possible when I'm doing my fine art for, for these nights. Like, um, I, uh, I, I just have fun and I'm not worried about it. So I've sealed the front of this and yeah, I use GAC 100. It's that's like an acrylic primer that you can put on lots of surfaces to seal it so that nothing comes up and like what you paint on sits that's on the top. Um, but like the sides and the back aren't in any way prepared. So that's what me, why it won't be archival. If I, if I prepared the edges and the back and then after my painting, I like sealed it with a varnish, then it would become archival. I saw this amazing cardboard artist and he like cures the cardboard in latex. And so it lasts, but I believe like, you know, as I've learned my earlier stuff is not as archival as now my stuff is, but the more I learn, the harder I work to make it as archival. Cause I feel like people uh, are investing in like my piece enough to buy it. I, I want it to be the best possible piece in many ways for them. So. Uh, Paul asks, uh, would using matte medium perform as well? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I think, I think matte medium would work really well. I'm not sure about how well it seals to like being permeable. Um, like if there's anything in the cardboard or whatever, like, I don't know later if that will come through, but I know it gives a good base to work on top of. John, do you know? Um, <laughs> Matt Medium I mean, has been used for the last 50 years to entomb everything with artists. Um, I, I don't know what its long-term effect would be. I know that things that I've seen people do by using matte medium and using it as a sealant and entombing their work with it um, has worked really, really well for mm -hmm. things, things that I own of other artists that are 50 and 60 years old that, that have used it. Um, the you know, the thing that I'll probably mention most about, especially this crowd, um, illustrators generally have not been that concerned with the archival quality of their work because most, most illustrators see their finished piece as the printed piece. And that's, you know, and again, digital plays right into that. But for, you know, during especially the second half of last century, uh, I don't think illustrators took as much care of their work as maybe they should have. <laughs> I have one in the family I wish would have paid more attention to certain things. <laughs> but um, um, actually, he became very aware of it um, in his world of painting. And it was more important for that because, again, that he was, as an illustrator, he was selling a piece that was going, the purpose of it was to go to print. And mm -hmm. you, so outcome makes a big difference of how you treat that. And right. John's, re, John's reality is it had no tangible value beyond its use as a cover of a magazine, as a cover of a book. It was not until after the bicentennial when there was a little focus on other American artists beyond the ones that are so well known and the illustrators got into that mix and some galleries came forward uh, that said, wow, look at this guy, Howard Pyle, he could paint. Who could, who's this N.C. Wyeth guy? Is that, that Andy's dad? He wasn't half bad, but it actually had some tangible value. And yes, we should try to uh, uh, keep those originals in good shape. John, you're working in pastels. How do you cure your pastels for um, uh, I actually past, pastels are really stable. They don't change; they fall off. <laughs> you have to mostly the with pastel is framing them properly. Um, mm -hmm. But you go back and look at uh, uh, the pastel work of the impressionists. The stuff is the color is just fantastic. Um, now the problem is, you know, I, I went to a, a Mary Cassatt show and. 
the pieces were, you know, pastels on the ground. And oh my uh, gosh. And it's just that's part that's the nature of the the material. But I don't you know, the things I do in pastel, I do just mostly for um I do in here. I don't have uh I don't do many finishes in pastel. So if you were a portrait artist working in pastels, your work is meant to be hung all over the fireplace at the Shlobotnik's house for the next thousand years. Uh, it needs to be framed properly. Right. So that it's not coming off by gravity and it's not coming off by uh, air conditioning. Yeah, people rubbing against it. <laughs> but what about watercolor? Yeah. What if you work in watercolor? Is there anything you need to take into account? To, yeah, uh, UV rays. Yeah, put it behind UV glass. Don't have it in the direct light of a window. John, when I think of your pastels, I always, it, Terry, I think this is the year you were at the Academy uh, when we were at Rockhurst. Um, but <laughs> my wife, girlfriend at the time, we had just like kind of started dating. And she drove to meet at the Academy and she pulled up and John had a stack of figure drawings that, <laughs> that were laying on the, um, on the sidewalk where we were parking uh, to go right up to the back. And Gianna just drove right over them. <laughs> <laughs> and there is this perfect tire tread right over <laughs> his pastels. And John was like, oh no, you know? And uh, she felt really bad. And then later that night she goes, why did he have them on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'll I'll point out that she did park on the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, right, right behind your dad. Right behind me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but again, it's like um, you know most of this stuff that the stuff that was done in life drawing class and. Uh, they're 20 minute poses. The ones I really like, I take out and I take good care of them. Um, but that's few and far between. Yeah, I have a stack of figure drawings from, you know, when you're down in the West Bottoms, John, when you moved, they right. were, they were, you know, leftover work from students. And I could not take myself to throw it away because I just was like, if there's something worth keeping in here, I, I'm the guy. I'm the guy who throws away the valuable art. <laughs> yeah. A future Thomas Blackwell. <laughs> yeah, you know, and so I, I got it and I put it in a, there's like a, we have one of those chests that like a grandpa brought over. Um, like a cedar Italy. chest? Yeah, and so I, I threw it in the chest and I just was like, I'm never going to think about these again. <laughs> You know, it'll probably be like at my estate sale. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you, you know? You're gonna have a you could have a garage sale that's really going to be uh, extraordinary. Maybe you know, I've I've accumulated some some good drawings from. Yeah, John, you you curated the good stuff though. I just got a grab bag of <laughs> yeah. of what was left behind. <laughs> You know, like the circus left and I just grabbed. <laughs> yeah. My opening line is, Gary, you really don't want to drive back with all this stuff in your car, you know? <laughs> well, John, over the years, I've collected some nice pieces that folks have given me in thanks or I picked up at some of the Society of Illustrators auctions and such. For those who are new to the group, I was the director of the Society of Illustrators in New York for a couple of hundred years. And I did buy a, I did buy a nice little sketch and um, that's hanging in a special place in our house for a reason. It's a, a watercolor. Um, if any of you ever heard the artist uh, Milton Glaser, very famous oh designer and, and artist, he did a, a poster for a Broadway show called uh, Angels in America. It's a, um, it's a, a man with, it's a, human figure with wings that's bending over. And he did, as he said, easily 250 sketches of that simple figure with the wings. And uh, he donated half a dozen of them to the society's auction. And over the years, we 
we did quite well by them. And I actually actually picked one up. We had oh, a um, cool. It's it's fair. Oh, Cassandra is just gorgeous. So we have oh maybe I'm going to guess maybe we have twenty paintings in the house. And my two sons had a um, had a draft one time they were up here and they decided which they would take if the wife and I were in some fiery bus crash. And um, the, the portrait of me went first and Milton Glaser went second. So I, I felt very proud that I beat out Milton Glaser in some cool. but, it, but it is a watercolor. So we have to be careful where we, uh, where we hang it in the house. Right. Take good care of it. Yeah, man. John, I know I told you this story and I'm trying to remember, uh, there's an illustrator that your dad and my dad were friends with. Um, would it have been, it wouldn't Bob have been Hindell. Bob I Hindell. This, I know the story. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we were going, it, it's not really much of a story. It was just after my dad died, we were kind of, you know, archiving and going through this, you know, trophy room of collection, just things that people had given him to him over the past, you know, 50 years. And there was this figure drawing by Bob Heindel. And at the bottom of it, there was just a note that said, don't let your dog eat this one. <laughs> and it was just, you knew exactly what happened, which was Bob Heindel definitely had Trayvon printing. <laughs> they were going to print, uh, make prints for Bob. And my dad's dog probably ate it. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> wow. Yeah. That's that's awkward. There was an artist that he was doing prints for that was very, very protective that, you know, they always have overs, uh, you know, so maybe they ask for 500 prints. And if you print 600, they want you to destroy the additional 100. And he was extremely serious about this, which is fine. And he showed up and wanted to see them destroy the additional prints. And so they did that. And then my dad uh, loaded the prints up once they were done to deliver them. And he forgot to close the, the, uh, the back on his truck. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and like hundreds of these prints flew out. He had to go. He was, he said he was running down the highway collecting, <laughs> collecting this artist's prints. And he was thinking this, this guy didn't even want extra prints existing. Now they're just floating on 435. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could have gotten your wife out there to drive over them. She's good I at that. Know, exactly. I think there was plenty of damage done. That was a long time ago. But oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I can picture it. He's like a he's like a a Benny Hill skit or a Mr. It Bean. was. He was he said he was running, trying to gather all of them because he was he was paranoid that. <laughs> That you know, this artist would be driving a 435 and see one of his prints. We destroyed them all but these 300 that we distributed across the highway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're dropping did, them Tim, out of the did, you, did you watch the process of the printing being done by your dad's firm? Uh, I worked a summer uh, where I was a print assistant, but I, I would be... Uh, I wouldn't be honest if I said that I really understood it, especially today. Um, but I worked at the shop multiple summers and would assist the the, the pressmen or the press people. Uh, it, uh, it's quite amazing. Cassandra, do you yes. ever go to a, a printer and see your work being reproduced? No, I mean, I'll, uh, right now I'm just getting reproduced in stickers and cards. So I haven't seen any of the fancy stuff, but I would love to. Yeah, and Terry, to to kind of tell you, these these were pretty big presses that you would never let up. Uh, you uh, require a very skilled technician. There was no way I was touching them, and it's one of those things where I was I was actually scared of them. They those the rollers and everything they're they're an intimidating. It's an intimidating machine. Terry, have you gone? Um, I have not, but my wife. Um, has worked for the Museum of Modern Art for many years, overseeing the production of their um, Christmas cards, their holiday mm -hmm. cards, and their uh, retail prints. 
their uh, appointment calendar. So yeah, she's been on press in China often, uh, Spain, Verona, Italy. Um, it's, it's quite a exacting science and it takes someone with a great eye to look at a, a proof coming through and say that red needs to be 8% more. I wouldn't know that, but she's gotten so good at saying, I know what the original looks like. Mm -hmm. And that's starry yeah. night. The starry night ain't starry yet. And we're not paying until it is. And uh, the, the pressman, I'm sure Tim's dad had pressmen that were very exacting. And, and my dad, that. my dad was like that, Terry. My dad could read color exceptionally well. Um, like, to a crazy degree, his understanding, of, his understanding of color was really advanced. Um, and then, you know, he could also, uh, like call it a party trick. He could read, he could read backwards and backward and mirrored. Um, really? yeah. And that is, <laughs> that's how you would set type. Of yeah. course. <laughs> so he could read like, yeah. He used to say, like, if he would go into someone's office, if they had like a letter on their desk facing them, he could read it like no problem. Um, he could read upside down. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was weird. It's weird because I I'm dyslexic, so I'm like, <laughs> so it's like I went the other way. <laughs> See, I I think I was more like your dad. I mirror wrote um all the way through like third grade. Oh wow. And um. Like I, I was a sign artist and cause I'm left-handed, I would have to do all the chalkboards backwards, like write them from right to left so that I wouldn't yeah. smudge them. So I, I hear your dad on that one. Oh, that's interesting. There was a photograph online today of the, uh, of Bob Peake who the illustration would be on Mount Rushmore and he was signing autographs and he was signing them with his left hand. He was a, he was a Southpaw. All right. Not that that matters, but. You know, we're always happy to have more in our club. Yeah. I have a, you know, this is kind of cool though. When I moved into the house that I'm in now, which is the house my dad grew up in and where he ran his business. Uh, he ran his business in the basement uh, until the city kicked him out. Uh, <laughs> but when I moved in here, there was all the press equipment. A lot of the press equipment was still here. And uh, <laughs> I thought this was so funny. There was a single sheet manual to his Heidelberg Press. It was one single, it was like a postcard size instruction on how to operate a Heidelberg Press. Wow. <laughs> and it was, it wasn't creased. It wasn't, and if you knew how my dad took care of things, it was baffling. It was in perfect condition. <laughs> And uh, I posted a photo of it and Heidelberg, their Instagram account shared it because they were baffled by it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we've got a very surprised guest today. Whoa. Who's coming through that celebrity trap door? It's yeah. they said it could happen, yeah. folks. They the return of happen. Raymond Benia. Wow. The hey light there. Applause. The prodigal, Hello, <laughs> the prodigal, the prodigal, I don't know how to say it. The prodigal son. Yeah, yeah the prodigal isolationist returns. <laughs> yeah, I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? How are you? Hello, yeah. Ray. How are you, man? Good, good. How about yourself? I'm okay. I've missed you guys. I've missed you guys. Man, yeah, it's great it's to have you here too. today. Yeah, how's, yeah. I, do, I usually start teaching. I, I end teaching um, right around like uh, around six, and I got about like an hour drive. So uh, I just, just got home. So I... Uh, I needed to jump on and do some some drawing. Oh, that's great. I am Thank really you. glad you showed up, Ray. Well, thanks, Ray, John. I didn't expect that. I thought I was going to get a... The heckling's to come. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah that's true. We're going to get you back in here consistently. We've discussed this. <laughs> Don't beat up on Ray the first night. You know, <laughs> Give him five night, minutes, step guys. It, start stepping it up. I know. I was. I, I cautiously, very timidly, uh, pit, uh, clicked on the OK button to, to launch the uh, <laughs> connection. You know, and Ray, where like, are you teaching? Uh, I teach at um, uh, SUNY Fredonia, uh, which is like west of uh, of Buffalo. So I teach uh, two days a week there. Um, yeah, I teach life drawing and uh, uh, 
painting, uh, like intermediate painting. Excellent. Yeah, good to see you, Terry. Man, it's been it's it's been a minute, as they it's, <laughs> as the kids say. I don't even know if the kids say that anymore. They probably more middle aged people now say that, but uh, now that you did, probably not. Yeah. So, <laughs> I've that's always, how I figured I've, out how that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've rainy. already announced myself to be a geezer, so my my time frame is different <laughs> than all of you. Yeah, Raymond, your kid is like eight now, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep, the kiddos uh you know we're already looking at college applications and sat preps yeah I don't know. how's your baby doing uh the baby's doing really well thanks for asking she's uh gonna be seven months uh in on saturday oh gosh that's everything just gets so much more exciting i didn't realize it could but that's when they start becoming so much more aware yeah yeah and i'm already starting to see it you know like uh she knows when we're, we're you know we leave the room and stuff and uh yeah, yeah so uh, you, you know so it's it's great it's great it's uh definitely life-changing so um my uh my nephew is three months now oh my goodness so has it been three months already i think it's been like three and a half Oh but my. he's just gotten to the point where holding him, it doesn't feel like holding like a pork tenderloin. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like literally in size. Yeah. 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 Like he can hold his head up, you know? Yeah. 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 Seriously. Yeah. Ray, we're getting some like clipping on your audio. I don't know what it is. Oh, you are? Okay. Is that better? No. 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 It's like poppy. It, Ray's lost all his technical facilitation. No, the only reason I say is because I know how important your audio is, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Yeah, no, the first, the first guy, I had no idea a baby couldn't hold his head up on its own. It's a lot of work, the head holder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, those, are the, of... those are the kind of things you say if you don't want anybody to ask you to babysit. So, well, no, you know, I, I was telling, I was telling my mom this. I was like, "Did you know a baby can't drink water?" And she was like, "You are not fit for this." <laughs> Is that better? I uh, talk a little more. Yeah, testing one, two, one, two, one. Yeah, it's uh, no, it's I don't there. know what's going on. It's clipping yeah, on us. But yeah, I didn't know babies didn't drink water. You know what? You figure it out so quick. My husband had never changed a diaper ever. And then we had twins and within like 12 hours, he was a pro because he changed like 20. Twins. I feel like that's a very, like you get two kids right out the gate. That's yeah. yeah you say that's, that's like a, that's a bundle deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's its own chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to, watch a, to watch a woman nurse twins is to, uh, is to see real, real motherhood in action. You've got to balance them. You've got to control them. You've got to hope one's eating and the other one's, you, you get the picture. It's a, it's a challenge. My sister-in-law had twins. They're late 20s now, very successful kids, but it was uh, very exciting to see. And, and Ray, you said your, uh, your daughter is seven months and yeah, sorry seven, to be a little aware. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, is that is my audio better? No, I don't know. Maybe if you just switch to your machine. Just my regular know. machine? Yeah, just like your built-in mic. Maybe that's, I don't know what your situation is, but. Okay, that's it. That's, that's... <sighs> sorry, Ray. No, that's okay. okay. So it's clipping, right? Is it still clipping? Now it's not. Now it's not, it's just very quiet. So I think if maybe you just bump it up if you can. All right. You know, this is all a ploy. This is Ray coming in saying, how can I sabotage the illustration? <laughs> yeah, because I haven't had this other product. We have great mics over live, right? at, uh, <laughs> yeah. at Live Brush. All right, it's it's too this. quiet, Ray. Is that, is that better? <laughs> it's very quiet. Okay, I'm gonna boost it. You're like you're like thirty percent of what we are. Oh, yeah. I haven't had to provide tech support for a while. Especially to Ray. 
I know. Of all people. Can you still paint really well, Ray? Um, Actually, yes. I saw your <laughs> painting you post, that. Ray, and it looked really good. So I saw a landscape you posted the other day. It looked terrific. It was beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. But now you sound good. Oh, I sound, I sound better now? Quiet. Very quiet. Very quiet? Yeah. Okay. How about... Like, I would recommend, like, a 50% boost. 50%. Hey, Timmy, we do, we're at the end of the first pose. Okay, great. So Cassandra, brush down. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> Keep going. No, um, no, I'll do. I'll go into the next one. This is. I just love the light on this. Yeah, it's fun. Super fun cool. Fun. Hey, uh, Timmy, can I do my little spiel now? Yeah, let's We're gonna do, do it. A, a visual arts passion spiel. Um, we are enrolling. Uh, our enrollment closes October second. Our next semester starts October 9th. And I just wanted to real quickly say, hey, we have two programs. We have an illustration program and we have a concept art program. Some of the best working artists in the industry teach these classes. And these classes are all very specific. For, they're the things that, oh, myself and a group of artists that have been at the academy for years decided was the most important information to develop a portfolio, to prepare yourself to work in the industry. And the concept art program kind of follows the, the, the same steps. I, I look at this, that our process skill and craft crafts is a, uh, it's a very physical, the physical aspect of uh, making a picture. Um, it's also the pipeline of the industry, all the skill sets that relate to it. It's all about putting a picture, designing and putting a picture together. Second class is an ideation class. It's about identifying the problem and solving it. It's a uh, really great uh, way to get from text to visual. And then in the portfolio class, we make our students or, uh, fill out a portfolio brief before they can make an image. They identify their audience. What are the art directors they want to work for? What part of the industry? And really make them think about function. And in the career class, we're actually putting them their students are putting it into action. They're calling on art directors. There's a, they're redesigning their websites, aligning their social media, building, um, uh, putting newsletters together, uh, reaching out, introducing themselves to art directors, sending direct mail pieces. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's the practical application of starting of what an emerging artist should be doing. Yeah. And considering there's so many new people joining us tonight, just to be clear, this is a this is, this is what visual arts passage is outside of illustration isolation. This is, we offer really immersive mentorship courses that as you can see are taught by working pros. Um, those classes, you know, John, if you were to go back, the, the classes that we're talking about, if you're, if you're really enjoying tonight, you know, you would start with process, skill and craft or ideation, and then you work up and during your enrollment, you build a portfolio and you study under these working pros that are going to kind of help act as your compass. And it's, it's, um, we've been doing this very, very much the same. Well, Cassandra, you, you went through the illustration Academy. A yep. um, lot of the, lot of the same material. It's gotten even more focused and a more direct, um, our, our instructors on the illustration side are Audrey Ben Jamison, Edward Kinsella, Dale Stefanos, myself and Sterling Hunley. These four guys are all academy students, uh, academy products. Um, and Audrey is kind of the product of a couple of academy instructors at, at Ringling. And I don't, I can't even explain Audrey. She's just like a freak of nature, a freak. Amazing. Uh, I called her a freak show of talent the other night. <laughs> <laughs> she is absolutely amazing. Um, our guests, we always have uh, their 10 week uh, program. Uh, 10 week uh, semester, we always have three guest artists focused in that in, in either, either program. So there's three concept guest artists, there's three illustration guest artists. Um, these are the guest artists for this coming um, semester. I'm really excited. Uh, Doug Cheka was the very first student to ever sign up for the Illustration Academy 27 years ago. Miriam oh. Martinsick 
just finished our program like maybe four months ago, two semesters ago. Uh, she's already won a gold medal at the Society of Illustrators. She had multiple image, three, three additional images uh, accepted. Uh, she's done work for Sujin Basili. She's working for, you know, top art directors. It's just amazing the success she's having. So do we have that built into the program where it's, <laughs> then you come back as a guest speaker? <laughs> well, a lot of, lot, I'm telling you a lot of our students, it's great to be able to go back to your past students that have developed great careers. I mean, that's our objective is to help people develop in the industry. And then on the concept side, it's very much the same way. Um, the whole idea is getting the basic design elements, um, uh, character, creature, and environment in the first class, developing assets in the second class, and starting to world to the world building. You're doing the same thing the illustration students are doing. You're, you're identifying who you want to go to work for. Um, art directors run our industry. They rule our industry for on the on the hiring side for artists. You got to know who they are. You got to build make work that's appropriate, whether it's in a studio or uh, on a freelance um, uh, trajectory. So, uh, very similar approach. The whole idea is to make a functioning portfolio to get you started. Uh, our 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 concept artist instructors are all phenomenal. <laughs> um, Vivian. And John Neimeister were both past students at the Illustration Academy. Uh, like uh, both Vivian and John, uh, Vivian just took a new job and she's actually taken a semester off. So Taylor Fisher and Narjis Jafari are from uh, Wild Blue Studios are te teaching our second level class, the, the advanced concept. John Neimeister at, at um, High Res Studios, he's a senior concept artist at High Res Studios is teaching our intro class. And then Lake Hurwitz, who is, uh, he art directs, works for Wizards of the, Co of the Coast and, uh, and, and then works for freelancers for a lot of people. He's a phenomenally good artist, a great concept artist. Um, and their guest speakers are uh, Grace Lou, Miles Wadsworth and uh, Mitchell Malloy. Um, our, uh, we've had it set up that we didn't always do this. Now we do that in, the, in both concept and illustration programs can share the, um, the guest speakers. Um, you get to see all six. And so you, get, you have six visiting artists coming into the program on top of your mentorship classes. And the classes were that, you know, the way it lays out is we can have a three hour live class on Saturday for your homeroom. Uh, we have a, a meetup in the middle of the week called Study Hall. It's three hours live where a group of our classes come together and there's multiple instructors there. And then we use the we use Slack as a product to communicate, to connect our students with our instructors on a daily basis. Uh, our goal is that, you know, if somebody can wants to put six hours into a class or 40 hours into a class, we're always going to be able to answer them. And um, I think I'm really proud of the product. I think we've done a really good job with it. And I, I love the people involved with it. There's some of the best talent in the industry. So we enro enrollment closes October 2nd. If you have any interest, reach out to us, check out the website and uh, we'd love to have you in the program. Yeah, don't sleep on it. All right, I got through it okay, Timmy. Yeah, you did. I shared links to both programs. You know, it feels like we should say like it, 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 it's it's kind of like that week with NPR where they're like, <laughs> <"You come laughs> we're taking donations. <laughs> yeah. Pledges. Hey, donate your used car to Visual Arts Passage. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah, no, don't. We have enough used cars. <laughs> um, but uh, you get to see a bit of our community here on Thursdays. And I think it. Uh, um, it, it's a it's a, a glimpse of what we do. It's not the, the 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 mentorship classes are extremely focused and some great work is being produced there. Um, success comes from it. All right, so we're on pose number two. Yeah, and we're back to Ray's tech issue. <laughs> oh, Ray. Oh, no. Is it better or is it worse? I think we'll survive. Yeah, we're fine, yeah. right? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Is it? It's. It, you gotta tell me, Timmy. If it's it clipping. sounds Is better. It clipping? It's, it's, it's clipping. still clipping. It's still clipping, man. But we hear you fine. Yeah. You just don't have that. 
radio voice that you always have. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, John, you would probably do this best. We have so many new people tonight. It's easy to forget we have such a new audience. Many of them probably have not met Ray. So I, 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 think, you, I think you would do a much better introduction, John. I've never but, met Ray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they've never met him at Illustration Isolation. <laughs> Yeah, just kidding. I um, I uh, I got a phone call from one of Ray's instructors at the Academy of Art, the, the chair of the illustration program there. And he called me and he said, I, I have a name for you. And I said, OK. He said, um, Raymond Bonilla. And he said, someday he'll be teaching at your program. <laughs> And I, I said, wow, well, this guy must be good. <laughs> I mean, he must be one hell of a student. And um, that was a long time ago, Ray, um, that, that uh, Chuck reached out to me. That's about the 1800s, I think. Yeah, I think so. But <laughs> man, what a call. I mean, Ray, Ray taught a class for us uh, last fall and loved for him to teach more classes for us. Um, he is an exceptionally talented illustrator and a, 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 an extremely good painter. Um, he did, he's done lectures on Studio Bridge, um, demonstrations on Studio Bridge, and his process and the way he approaches, his understanding of the illustration industry is amazing, uh, the history of it. Uh, Terry, um, you should listen uh, to, uh, uh, you two should have a long discussion someday. And I'm sure you already have, but um, Ray really knows his stuff. And um, just so excited when he agreed to do some things with us and work with us but because he's just an amazingly talented guy um, who's worked at it really hard. And uh, he's a good explainer of what he does. Great explainer of what he does. Well, John, thank you. You read the script exactly as I wrote it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ray, I texted you an idea that I think will fix this problem. I, I left out the some of the superlatives that you wrote, that you sent to me. I just, I felt that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> you had to simplify? I simplify. Yeah. Yeah, um... <laughs> Ray, in your studio bridge, I love that you really went into your influences and like, I, I really enjoyed that aspect. Cassandra, I just gave Ray a whole- I know, he's totally him. working on his sound, but I just uh, <laughs> thought it was cool. No, it's fine. I just didn't want you to think he was ignoring you. I get I it, I get it. I know he's juggling that because he just gave me a <laughs> thumbs up to my, uh, my concept. <laughs> I, I think Ray's seven year, seven month old daughter could probably step right up there and randomly push two buttons <laughs> and it would be perfect. Yeah, probably. Perfect law of uh, working yeah. technology. Yeah. I think we should say a bunch of great things about Ray that he won't, he, that he won't even respond to. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody will think, man, what, a, what an arrogant guy that kid, guy is. They've said some of the nicest things about him. He, he has no respond. response whatsoever. <laughs> the nerve. John, you, you made a good point, and I think it is um, I think it is true. He he knows his history, but he also knows the current industry. And I think the only reason you study history is so you can interpret your current industry in the light of how they adapt to their current industry. Um, changes in mores, changes in technology, uh, changes in how your work was going to be used, black and white, color, whatever, now digital. I, and I think he's good at a few times I've heard him talk on, on isolation about it is that you can tell us what Rockwell, how Rockwell did it and how Rockwell would have done it today. And that's kind of why I think you, you touch on some of those historical aspects. I know you guys, you did fashion last week, so you weren't drawing faces. And there's a lot of difference in the way you draw fashion as opposed to drawing faces. But there's a reason to be able to draw fashion today, just as there was back then. And I think Ray knows that stuff. Thank you, Terry. Um, that makes tremendous sense. Um, I, I told a 
kind of a funny little story about Gary Kelly responding to a student in a debate. It wasn't an argument. It was a, it was a healthy debate. And Gary had pointed out to the student that his work looks similar to a, a well-known illustrator. Well, oh, excuse me, well-known painter. And the, art, the, the student took the defense, said, well, I don't even know who that painter is. And Gary, his response was so great. He said, uh, that's even worse. He said, you know, that's your job as an artist to know who that person is. And that's a well-known painter. That's part of being an artist. You've got to pay attention to history and who's currently working. But I, I think that's really true. Knowing yeah. past and knowing what's going on right now, extremely important. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Can you guys hear me better? Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Back to your radio voice. There you go. I know. <laughs> the real Thanks, Raymond. Raymond. Yeah. Hey, John, thanks for the nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, con uh, comments on my work, uh, on my work and whatnot. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I was uh, it just sorry. I, I was uh, scrambling to climb my phone. Uh, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I think I love it, illustration history. Probably would never want to go toe to toe with Terry Brown uh, in a million years. Actually, having a discussion, you know, frightens me to death, uh, Terry. So. You'd yeah. hold your own, don't worry. You'd hold yeah. your own. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, um, yeah, but I, I, I totally agree about the, the, the history of, of things. It, and it's, man, you know, I've never, I, I honestly believe, like, if you're not conscious or aware of illustrators and painters, or just aware of the history, you, you can really start your growth as an artist. Um, because you just don't know what's possible. I mean, I remember when I was a student, I uh, ran across, I was, and I tell this uh, story often, I was <clears throat> studying to be, I wanted to become an animator uh, and uh, early on, and I was just going over everything Disney and, and any DVD I can get my hands on with the behind the scenes, because, you know, YouTube wasn't really around like it is now, you know, and, um, DVDs are still around, so that tells you how old I am. Uh, and I was looking at a, uh, a D, I had a DVD of Treasure Planet. Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, and I would just watch it over and over and over again because I, it was just, you know, it wasn't the like the greatest, it was a flop for Disney, the huge expensive flop, but it was such a beautiful movie and I didn't understand why. And I, why I just was just enamored with it. And they did it uh, on the DVD. They actually had a, uh, a whole documentary on the visual inspiration for it. And that was NC Wythe and the Brandywine artist. And I was the first time that I came across uh, their work. And I was just shocked because I didn't realize, you know, imagery could be that powerful. Before. I've never seen anything like that in my life. And I just thought, think to myself, like, had I never seen that, had I never was like, you know, uh, aware of it, I don't think I would have gone down the path that it would have gone down, you know? Um, hmm. And so it's, it's just, you know, you just, you, you don't know until you see it, you know, you don't know what you don't know, you know, and yeah. uh, you got to kind of see it to believe it, you know? Um, Ray, I used the timeline in my class that think of the movies, think, think of the imagery that John Ford grew up with. It was N.C. Wyeth and, and the Brandywine, those adventure books. Uh, yeah. Ben made all those great movies in the 30s and 40s. Right. Who, who saw those as a kid? Well, it was Steven Spielberg. So he made his movies. And then there's a generation now that grew up with the kind of creative, inventive, visual perfection of a Spielberg movie. They're making our imagery today. It's got, a, it's got a timeline to it. And, and what you grow yeah. up with, I think, affects you um, in a big way. It's, it's Yeah, just, absolutely. It's yeah, and it's, and it's knowing the, I think the, the like the extra step as like artists is, is knowing, you know, who influenced the people that influenced us, you know? And you find mm -hmm. it's always like kind of, you always find, uh, you know, like a, at least with me, I found that like artists that I really love this work I just I'm just enamored with. They're all everyone's kind of looking at each other's work and everybody's influenced uh, by each other's work, you know. Because from 
from there, you know, I, you know, just found out like, uh, you know, you go from the thirties to the, you know, the, the turn of the century and then you have, you know, Leindecker and then you have then Rockwell and then you, like you start to see all these, these connection, connection points. And you could see like, you know, Brandywine school in, in tons of concept artwork now, you know, uh, if, if you know what you're looking for and people might not know the reference to them. I mean, they would, but you know, you could, uh, the average sort of the beginning art student probably wouldn't know that like, Oh, you know, that, you know, that giant, uh, you know, the, like a classic image of a giant walking on the beach in the clouds, you know, yeah. uh, like that atmosphere, like, Oh, that's an NC Wyeth reference. Like that's been used. You know, I I've seen that, that used so many, like as much times as like the man, sit, you know, standing on the rock with the crashing waves. I, f I forgot yeah. which, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, who was the artist behind that? But um, yeah, it's just like one of these types of uh, these tropes, you know. And and I was going through a, a Da Vinci. I went to a show with Leonardo, about Leonardo Da Vinci. And they had this section where they had artists that were influenced by Da Vinci. And you can see all of these Da Vinci mannerisms in the other artists' work like the eye or like how he, he did hair in one painting kind of showed up in another one, kind of a different take, but it was still the same thing, you know? Uh, and I thought to myself, oh my goodness, you know, they've been doing this for centuries, you know, artists yeah. have been influencing other artists and just being aware. Can you imagine an artist that being, uh, then not being aware of Leonardo da Vinci? And I kind of yeah. feel the same way when it comes to like, you know. Well, they were, they were all focusing, they were focusing on, on different things. And if you, uh, get that in the back of your mind. You think of um, you know Howard Pyle said, "Don't paint the sleeve, be the arm, feel the yeah. muscles." So if you look at the brandy, it's very true. If you look at the brandy wine painting, they spent a whole lot more time painting the hand than they did painting the sleeve. Yeah. And you mentioned yeah. this guy Lion Decker from the yeah. teens and twenties. He spent his whole day just painting the clothes, like you did yeah. last week. You know, he could have cared <laughs> less what the guy looked like. It was his his friend Charlie Beach. So. <laughs> same face every time so it's, right, it's, what, right. it's what you it's what you enjoy uh focusing on becomes becomes your passion yeah anyway, absolutely so welcome back uh, how's your artwork going yeah. there ray it's it's going i'm uh, very very busy it's uh i know but what are you just, drawing right now oh this oh uh i don't know yet i'll, I'll, I'll find out you know when uh the timer goes off or something you know and, and if it's bad i'll just blame my audio you know yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's it's really it feels really good to to be back and and uh drawing with uh with everyone it's always a, a real uh privilege i uh was you know i've been meaning to come back for weeks now but i have been secretly in the background you know looking always looking at everyone's drawings it's always fantastic and and also uh catching up on Studio Bridge. And I, I just uh, was, I spent the morning watching the second part of Catherine Lamb's. Um, was that scary? Uh, oh my goodness. I, I went to my wife, I says, uh, you know, she's, how old is she again, 24? Yeah, she, uh, somewhere in there, um, really, she's very young. And I, and I said- They are very young. This, this this woman's an animal. She's good. I mean, like, what, <laughs> this is like the most, some of the most incredible, powerful work I've, I've seen. Like, I was just stunned, you know, and I loved her, her, her journey to that, you know, and uh, it just, yeah, I, I just really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to chime just, in on that a little bit, Ray, how easily she put those pictures together, mm -hmm. how easily she did her, um, you know, the, putting those thumbnails together, designing that piece. It was really impressive. I, yeah, I've seen yeah. very few that can do that at that, yeah. or certainly at that pace. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And they're and beautiful she's, pictures too. Yeah, they're gorgeous. And they're, they're really well thought out and just, you know, her, you know, I won't spoil too much because for those of you who haven't signed up, signed up for Studio Bridge, you can get all this stuff on demand if I'm correct, right? Even if you yeah. missed it. Yeah, so Thanks. it's like, just, I mean, <laughs> just go take a look at Catherine Lamb's work. I mean, the one with the uh, the student work, the piece with the with the, the noose, 
that was the pit, the frame, uh, the picture frame. It, it was symbolic for the noose right. of the woman standing in the bed. I was like, that's brilliant, you know? And uh, yeah, that's, that's a, that's she's, an artist. She, to, uh, Catherine is, you know, just a great example of a very fresh face to the industry within the last few years that knew what she wanted to do knew, and, and developed a body of work that was appropriate for where she wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And boy, did she put it to work, man. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very extremely focused. I was really impressed, you know, uh, and you could tell that stuff doesn't happen on by accident. You know, she was, I mean, she worked, you could tell she put in the hours uh, to get up to that level that young, you know. I'm, yeah. And it I seems was, like there was just like, there's so much intention with yeah. decisions. It, it didn't just like happen by accident. Like you said, no, like, yeah. there was a lot of intention. Um, you know, uh, I, I mean, I think about that, John, I mean, just to go full circle, when I think about our classes, the, when they, you start like kind of day one, it's like, what do you want to do? Okay. As yeah. a, we ask students, what do you want to do? And from there, everything you do should be to work towards that. Yeah. Ray, did, did you hear Catherine's uh, discussion, which I, I'm going to boast about this from the Academy, but we have an assignment at the Academy called the flat assignment. And it's the help students understand that picture making is not about as much about polish and finish as most people think it is. It's about concept. It's about construction and, and, um, and shape design. And her, if you look at her work, she talked about the work that she's doing now and how influenced she was from that, that one assignment. And you can see it in her work now. I mean, it's- Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it, it was kind of night and day difference. And like her work was strong, uh, but, before, uh, but after Illustration Academy, you can tell the amount of uh, intent, you know, uh, it was like almost an artist, the, the amount of her voice was coming through. Um, was was really stunning uh, to see that you know what went what went you know from what was what were just really wonderfully beautiful pictures became pieces of artwork that had a, a concept behind it and a design that supported that concept and was you know that was a you know, illustrated in a really eloquent manner so I, I'm you know and yeah. She doesn't waste value, I can tell you that. And it's just really, really just such such wonderful design. It was it was really great. I was really excited to see her work after you had told me that she was coming to, uh, to talk and it was uh, it was great, you know. Uh, so yeah, so I recommend those of you that sign up and just take a look at that. I mean, that's that that is a uh, a really incredible talk, you know. I'm glad I went, I'm glad I went before Catherine went. Let's just say that. <laughs> She's, uh, Catherine's also like a great example of very contemporary illustration and she does a lot of like New York Time dailies mm -hmm. and those those illustrations are made in six hours I mean she the the, the work is so has to turn around so fast and it, it, it you know, she talks about that quite a bit mm -hmm. she also discusses the you know learning how to adapt to being an illustrator and being on assignment and and really trying to be uh schedule your time appropriately and be efficient. Uh, I think, I think Catherine did a great job discussing all that. It was very open about it. That's one of the key elements of illustration is, is timing. You've got a deadline. You've got to deliver a quality product. So you'll be hired again on a specific time scale. 
And if you've only got a few hours, that's all you've got. You can't tell an art director, well, I can't do it. You're going to do it. As Thomas Jefferson said, you want something done well, give it to the person who doesn't have the time to do it. All your, <laughs> yeah. en all your energies focus on getting that final product out the door, and then you move on to the next one. I would, I would hope all of you who have done this for many years, that's part of the joy of it is you've done it. Now you move on to the next one. You can exhale. Chris Payne's definition of illustration is art done under the circumstances. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think that's so perfect. <laughs> One of the great stories of the past of the artist who could never finish his work is Johnny Gannam, G-A-N-N-A-M, who did all those marvelous ads for um, for sheet companies, uh, you know, bedding companies, white on white mm -hmm. with the, the woman in there with the kids because the guy couldn't be in bed with her. She's wearing white. So it got white on white on white. And the art director would come over to his studio and physically say there's a phone call for you. When he got up to answer the phone, he'd take the art off the easel because this guy was never done. So says, Son, I can use it. Bye. You have to move on to the next one. That's funny. And those those are the circumstances. I, I bet John, your dad could tell stories of having to be, finish on time to meet the conductor of the train who's going to take the original into Manhattan. Yeah. Well, I think we, one of the reasons uh, my dad's seeking out that property at the end of our street, little town of Reading, Connecticut, there was the train station and he used to pay the conductors that were going into Manhattan to deliver all of his artwork for him. And so he would finish the, finish the work early in the morning, meet the train at, at, whatever train, he, as soon as he could get there, the, the probably the 6.45 or 7.30 train. And uh, an hour and a half later, he would be in the, uh, the hands of the art director. And I just, that's so romantic that, that you know. That's incredible. That was, that was technology at the time. Those it, tell the really, it did tell a really funny story about, he had a, a dog that, jumped in the back of his convertible and drove to the station with him. And when my dad handed the guy the, the artwork, the dog jumped aboard the train. And, and as the train was moving, and, and he, my father's description of it, he said about three or 400 yards down, you know, he's just, he didn't know what to do. The train had left and his dog's on the train going to New York City. And so he said about... 300 yards down the track, his dog just, they just threw him off the train. <laughs> so his dog fly into the, to, into the bushes. Uh, that's great. Old world. Yeah, yeah. David Grove used to tell me stories about how uh, he would be flying, flying his like convertible, like over the, the hills of San Francisco to try and get to the airport. Uh, in order to, to to get to the the special art shipper that would ship his illustration, you know, like just in time, you know, Sa before Dave FedEx. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. So if you're doing something digitally now, it's just a question of when you press download right. to the cloud. You probably don't send your files right. anymore. You probably download them to something. Well, you know, um, the modern stress is like, how's your Wi-Fi? Yes. Very, have you very ever had stressful. that? Has that ever been an issue, Cassandra? Um, uh, like there's been times where I have difficulty sending things, but nothing that has been an issue with a deadline. But yeah, it's not good when you need to get something. For me, it's just image, you know, simple images, no big deal. Yeah, but usually when something, uh, if something's going to fail, it usually happens, you know, right, right at the last minute. So I'm always uh, stressed out because I hear when I'm sending off a piece of artwork because I uh, I hear so many horror stories. Like I have, I have you know, nightmares where I get an email from the uh, art director saying like, uh, 
is everything okay? We didn't receive your artwork and it's a week late. And I'm like, oh no, I sent it, you know? So we have yeah, it hard I, here too. I still <laughs> stress about shipping. I had a, a piece on a truck circling, oh, no, yeah. you know, Charleston, South Carolina for four days. And it was supposed to be there between this past Friday and Monday and no, their weather no. was bonkers. So it just stayed on the truck for four days and I would just send emails going, I'm so sorry, it's near you, but not with you. Yeah, that's the that's the uh I was just, shipping stuff for galleries. I was yeah. just trying to uh look up the tips and tricks I used to follow to submit assignments late. <laughs> uh and there was a thing I used to do with files where it would make it look like it was a complete file, but it would never <laughs> open. And it would just <laughs> And it'd buy you, it'd buy you, I mean, like, if the teacher wasn't on top of the game, it'd buy you, like, 72 hours. <laughs> like, oh, bad then form, it, bad form. Because <laughs> then, it, then it comes down to if how long are they going to procrastinate bringing up the broken file to you? <laughs> so this is what illustration isolation has turned into yeah. since I've been gone, huh? But then T I looked, Timmy, I, Timmy's I, tips. <laughs> I tried looking it up online how to buy more time on your assignment and the number one suggestion on wiki how is blame technology <laughs> <laughs> like yeah uh, there's, there's a show fun. on there's a show on hbo called the other two and it's like an aspiring actor and he gets signed to an agent uh predicated on the idea that he's a a writer too and he's he's not a writer and he owes he owes her a screenplay and he, he's got to like write a screenplay that weekend and in a manic state he just submits a title page <laughs> <laughs> and the story then becomes the agent is freaking out because the actor is approaching her and she's like, I never read his script. <laughs> <laughs> right? And he's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I, I love that stuff. I mean, I, I wasn't, yeah, for an English major, I wasn't, I never understood the like page, you know, the, the sticklers for like page requirements and word count. Yeah. There's that scary scene at the opening of uh, Where the Buffalo Roam, the Hunter S. Thompson movie with, yeah. Um, with Bill Murray and his phone keeps ringing because it's Rolling Stone and he's missing his deadline and he's got a fax machine so he just takes up some some newspaper tears it up and throws it in the fax machine and says yeah go ahead chew on that for a while <laughs> <laughs> the technology of its day you probably said yeah. fax uh, faxed sketches John you probably said faxed sketches when you were young I did a lot I had a fax machine if you, uh, I think if you were doing work with Gary Kelly right now, you'd probably get a fax. <laughs> <laughs> God, where would it go? <laughs> uh, that's great. Like, my, yeah, my very sweet older neighbor was just trying to get me to fax something for her. And I was like, how about we just scan it and email it? Would that work? <laughs> you, yeah, did your neighbor go... I, I understand two of the words you just said. <laughs> yeah. she, she's really sweet, but she's definitely older. So I just did it for her and then everything was okay. Oh, that's great. That was nice of you. She's a very nice lady. Yeah. Yeah, Timmy would have just, you know, stuffed some uh, newspapers in, uh, right. in the fax machine and send it out. You know? <laughs> she Here's what you want to do. Buy, buy some time to the... Yeah. Real yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how to help you. I do know how to buy you some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. That is good stuff. You guys moving on to number three pretty soon? Yeah, yeah this is the most sad. Yeah. I didn't I didn't draw number two. All right. So yeah, we do need it. Terry, that's a good point because we're 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 definitely ready for number three. It's exact the right perfect time. Yeah. So just a reminder, be sure to post your work to Instagram using hashtag illustration isolation and add visual arts passage. I'll I'll type it in the chat. But before the night's over, we're uh, we'll open up Instagram. We'll check out everybody's work. I highly recommend it. But uh, don't 
Don't wait until the end. You won't have enough time. It is great fun to see them. I shall tomorrow. Always enjoy your company, gang. Ray, it's good to see you back here. I don't hold the fact that you're from Queens against you, but uh, huh. someday we're <laughs> going to have to get together and talk about uh, good old artists from the past. Good, That'd be good, incredible, Terry. Good luck, gang. Good luck on numbers three and four. I'll see you next week. Bye, Bye Terry. Thank you, Terry. Bye, Terry. Great to see you. Yeah. That was Terry Brown. Wow. He's like always awesome. He's got a story for everything. Like he's he's connected to to all aspects of life. It's amazing. <laughs> hey, you know, my perspective, and Ray, this probably happened to you a little bit uh, at the beginning, but man, Terry wielded a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah you know being the director of the society of illustrators he kind of kept that organization together and uh somebody you wanted to uh make sure you were on the right side of in the industry uh Absolutely. not that he not that he was you know uh, an aggressive or had a bad side he just had a lot he had a lot he had a big job a lot of influence and he was a, he still, he still acts, you know, he's, he's still very much one too, a, the steward of like the history of illustration. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. I just feel like he, you know, uh, knows that what he has, like the knowledge he's been sharing is like a great responsibility on, he feels responsible to, to pass it on as much as possible. And I've always appreciated that about him. Yeah. He's, you know, he, th he thinks about the legacy side of it a lot. And actually, you know, that's, had been, and I don't know if it's as much as it is now, I don't want to say anything negative about the Society of Illustrators, but it was very much, I think, you know, they cured it, curated American illustration for since 1901. And, um, I hope that I hope it keeps going that direction. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for the next generation coming in, they just—it's an important institution mm -hmm. uh, to put it lightly, you know. Well, it's important to us. Yeah, absolutely. And what? What? Uh, I mean, where else can you sit down and have a drink? you know, next to uh, looking at Norman Rockwell, you know, and then over your shoulders at NCYF and, you know, it's just like you have like the drum where people like Frank Rosetta and Austin Briggs, you know, signed, signed it, you know. Uh, your dad, did you, your dad signed the, the, the drum? Yep. John? Was, uh, is he on the first or second one? I, I think the first one. I mean, he, awesome. he was, I mean, he was part of the Hall of Fame when he was, he was early. Uh, it, you know, he was, I think he was 43 years old. Wow. Wow. I think the only one younger than him to, to do it was, was Bernie. How, how old was Brad, Brad Holland when he, when he uh, entered in? I don't know. So you need to ask these questions when Terry was still here. Yeah. Dang it, Terry. Well, it, it, it all, it's, it all, it's a moving target. It all changes, you know? It's like, yeah, I know. Who won the most awards? Well, that's, that's all changed. Um, my dad liked to point out to everybody that he said, when I quit illustrating, I had won more awards <laughs> than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he used to, because the, the, the first person to surpass him was uh, Gary. It was Gary, right? So Gary, Brad, I think Gary and Gary, Brad. There's a whole bunch of them that are real close now. Um, but uh, he told Gary one night at dinner, he said, so how many did you do the, did, how many of those awards did you win when you were past 50? <laughs> <laughs> uh, love it. He wasn't competitive at all. Not well, yeah.
Uh, Here's a question from the crowd that I thought would be good is, do you guys have any comic book artists that you would recommend checking out if you're interested in pursuing that? Nate, you want to go first? Yeah, I got a laundry list. Uh, so, I mean, th th there's like artists to look at. I mean, there's th there's so many of them. Uh, like, I love uh, Fiona Staples' work, who, who did. Um, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm blanking on the the series that that she did. Um, was that saga? Was it Saga? I think I don't. I'm gonna check. I got yeah. It. Yeah. 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 So uh, like YouTube wise, where you can go to right now, like David Finch, Jim Lee, they have like YouTube yeah. channels up and, and just still chock full of just tutorials and, and them drawing, talking about art, talking about the industry. I mean, just, you know, uh, and really for, you know, two people that really stress really solid foundations and having an intent and, pit, and proper picture making procedures and um, Fiona Staples. There it is. Oh yeah. 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 I love it. I love saga so much. I, I, I got to actually did that, that wrap up to me. Oh, man. I don't know. I was buying the yeah. books for a while. I need to, uh, so was I. I need to, I'm behind. Yeah, totally. Me too. Okay. So we're in the same, same, uh, same predicament, you know, uh, I mean, there's like a lot of incredible, artists working and you know comic book industry is just like the illustration industry like you stop for like two seconds and john can attest to this like if, if you're not aware like they'll just like you wake up you won't recognize anyone who's working you know at, at a certain point you're like whoa where did all these people come from you know uh because people move in and out of that uh a good amount i mean i was just talking to a good friend of mine his name is paulo rivera do you know paulo's work john i don't is uh, worked for Marvel, uh, Valiant. I mean, all, all the major companies. But he was, he had done like a really incredible painted comic book series called uh, Mythos, and it, it uh, and they really based the Captain America movie a lot on his um, oh, cool. on his his painted comic book, which is crazy. And so now he's working. He's actually went from that to working in concept art uh, for Marvel. So. Um, and you know, you know, I think I do know who you're talking about now. Um, how 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 old is he? Uh, he's a little older than I am, so he's in his forties, early forties, I think. I don't think he's that much uh, older than that. Um, he's got a lot more hair than I do now. Right? Uh, on his head, you know. Um, he's uh, he's. Uh, I'm trying to think of like who who he went to. I think he went to Ringling actually. To be honest with you, I think he went to Ringling. Um, so I don't know if George George would have ran into him uh, at the time. But I'll I'll actually put his um, his work in the chat because I I really I think he like bridges the gap between like illust like traditional illustration and heck even figurative painting and comic books because. His process is just so, so incredible. Um, I feel that way about um, Jason Alexander. And, um, exactly, yeah. yeah. I feel the same way about that. That yeah. guy is a great painter doing comics. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, now that's a, he's like on another level, you know, uh, like I put him like, like in the same vein, like thinking wise as George and Kent Williams and like, yeah. you know, Phil he's Hale, a, like they've done. He's a you know, talent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to meet him and run into him in New York Comic Con and we just talked painting and it was just like, wow. Oh, cool. this, he's like a painter, painter. Like you talk to somebody like that, you're like, wow, you're, you're a real artist, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's like you still have paint from earlier this morning when you were in your studio. Like, this is yeah, crazy. I, I really like looking at his stuff. It's good. Yeah. John, somebody just asked, is ideation and visual storytelling appropriate for like an aspiring cartoonist or is it too fine art? No, it, uh, it, it, it would work very well for uh, uh, it, the whole idea is 
it's a method to um, be a better visual storyteller. Um, you get in a, a learning a, a process of how to identify problems and solve them this, that solve them with either a conceptual or narrative solution. And so it, it, it's very broad in its outcome, but it's more about the process than anything. And, uh, you know, good habits, good, you know, a way to be on target all the time, way to be consistent. Um, and it's, you know, it's Edward Kinsella teaching the class. He's, he's okay. <laughs> he's a solid B minus, John. He's a solid yeah. B minus. Anyway. Hey, Ray, I found your copy of Saga on Amazon. It's the first compendium and it's uh, 1,400 pages. So, <laughs> in, in one book, it just sounds, it, it's, you know what? It has to be I'll just massive. get it. I just get it. Yeah, they'll probably they have to probably special airlift it and then drop it off on a forklift, you know? Yeah. That's 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 funny. Fourteen hundred pages. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Uh and I'm assuming the format is, you know, as big as the book I just held up. I'm assuming they kept it big. Oh yeah, yeah. I would imagine so. I mean, yeah. that's wow. That's that's crazy. I mean you have to like reinforce my coffee table. <laughs> But the crazy thing, if anybody's never read Saga, it's Fiona Staples is very much a incredible storyteller, and it's fully painted. Yeah, here. I mean, this is it's a full full color. I mean, yeah. Let's look at that. I mean, that stuff is like. See, like, sorry, it's not not showing up. Are we on a grid? Oh yeah, we are. On a grid. Okay. Spotlight. Ah, so good. So good. Um, yeah. Be great. I mean, the out output, the lying cat. Oh, I love the lying I didn't cat. even think, I didn't even think, I didn't look at that page, but I, you kind of got to be careful. With you, yeah, you have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, that sorry, that, yeah. this, this episode's R rated. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's okay. You can blame me. You know, I'm I'm like uh, I come every so often. Yeah, I already you blame, you blame Dale. This is the reason why Dale should never not yeah. show up. You know? I I already flipped to another page. I was like, thank God it wasn't that page. <laughs> that would have got us in trouble. <laughs> you know, one thing I was gonna say uh, to like like uh, the uh, the students' question about how it relates to uh, you know, ideation and, and that process uh, that you guys teach. I mean, it's, and if you look at someone like Fiona Staples, I, I'm sure like that's all planned out. I mean, that's, that's careful consideration. I mean, I know uh, how Apollo works and everything is just, it starts with thumbnails. It starts with, you know, studying value pattern, then reference build up. I mean, it goes through the whole, it goes through the whole process. I mean, and he still does that. I mean, he's such a consummate artist, you know, it's everything down to like, you know, sculpting maquettes for his, uh, his characters. And, um, you know, uh, just as for lighting reference and things like that and how he goes about doing that. It's re really, you know, that that's the type of stuff that's not exclusive to any sort of, you know, uh, I guess venue you would call it, you know, because uh, it's the same stuff that I do for for my gallery painting, uh, and uh, you know I, I don't really see the difference. The only difference is application. It's where, where the work is going to be shown. So I mean, uh, I don't know. What does that? What does everybody else think about that? I mean, I think you know. First of all, the illustration industry is a process driven industry. So obviously the comic book, comic work is too. And understanding process, I mean, just, just the fact, you know, that's how you communicate. I mean, as an illustrator, you're, you, you work for art directors and you have to communicate with them. You communicate, them, communicate with them through a three value thumbnail, value study, finished drawing, whatever the, the project requires. But you know, you don't just get up one morning and decide, 
oh, I'm going to do a Time Magazine cover <laughs> of somebody. It's it's an assignment. So you're right. working with a team, and uh, you got to get in the habit. Process allows you to work in the right pipeline, and it makes you a better artist immediately because you get everything right. 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 If you have your process down pat and it's second nature, when you have to go, you know, change something else, you don't, you know what you're doing. You can move at a, a higher speed. Yeah. And you can't have much of a career when, you know, if you have a, a process that, it, you know, where sometimes it, the piece comes out okay and sometimes it doesn't and you don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've never heard a gallery uh, owner or art director say, give us five pieces, four of them can be okay. Let one of them be good. Yeah, yeah. Here's, a, here's an elaboration on the question. Uh, it sounds like, like they're saying like cartoon for the New Yorker say, I, I think I know the answer, but John, I, wanna, I think it's still practical. Oh yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like panel, single panel cartooning. Yeah, absolutely. Still. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, that's, that's even more so it's all, it's all idea. It's all concept and idea. So ha, being well equipped at that is incredibly important. You think about somebody like Jack Davis, like how good of an artist he was, you know, like it's just, to, to be some to be someone that's that quick and you have to be so facile with what you're doing like it, it you have to have everything in such a streamlined process because efficiency is the name of the game I mean like and yeah I just don't I, you know it would I would love to wake up one day and be like okay I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, you know I'm gonna do this 30 by 40 painting and then yeah I'll go home and maybe do a cover sure and then i'll you know i'll have a cup of tea and then you know maybe i'll finish that uh you know that entire uh comic book page that i was working on too you know uh without any planning that'd be great but it's just uh it's not the way it works unfortunately you know um do you know, do you know mark schultz uh john you ever heard, are you familiar with his work i i don't but so, uh, I'm bad Zemozoic. with names too. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. And you've told me that too. And I'm like, and I, I still say, have you heard, you know, I was, <laughs> uh, it, he did, uh, Zen uh, dinosaurs and Cadillacs and dinosaurs was a series back in the nineties, like on TV, but it was based off his comic book called Xenozoic Tales. And, uh, Sh Schultz has done writing and, and, um, he's done stuff like he's done Conan and, all nine. So he, he was, he had this talk and he talked about process and he talked about how, I mean, just thorough he is. I mean, he, he would just, there, he, he actually prints his books. Uh, Flesk, uh, John Flesk prints, uh, does a lot of his art books for him. Okay. And um, he, there, it, he, there's pages of it, just his thumbnails for just a single image, like, and just they're beautiful. And I remember a talk he gave, uh, talking about how you know as a, as artists you have to you have to have a process this is how you work things out you have to work things out he says you know when you're a student you learn you have to go through the process of going from a consumer of art to a producer of art and that is a very different mindset that you have to have because it's a, a lot easier to consume this this stuff than it is to uh you know, uh, produce it. And I've never heard somebody put it like that, you know. Uh, well said. Yeah. That being said, since you never heard of him, I should have should have taken the credit for it, you know. <laughs> so um, whoever's asking that question, I would I would encourage you to look at my favorite New Yorker illustrator cartoonist is John Cunio. Oh yeah. And 
Yeah, but you, you kind of have to watch his stuff too if you were going to show it on here. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, Timmy, yeah. let's not show that. I mean, <laughs> Let me just pull up Google Images. <laughs> yeah, you just share just share your desktop, Timmy. Let him see it. Well, that was that was uh, you know that I remember grabbing copies of like Esquire when I was a kid and seeing his column, and it was it was just wild. I was far too young to be stumbling across John Cuneo. <laughs> yeah. It's just incredible. Incredible. Do you think, I, I, I wonder, I want to ask him one day, you know, if I ever run into him again, does this like, is this hand still drawing when he's sleeping? Cause the man does not stop. I mean, like yeah. he's just idea after idea, after idea, after idea. I've, I've never, it's just the output. You know, it's it's really kind. Of, it's just so incredibly, just uh, it's inspiring to see somebody just. He's just always on. It seems like you know. Yeah. Um, he is good. I got a, a kick. I met him at the Society of Illustrators uh, in two th- awards night, two thousand February. 7th 2020 and he walked up to me introduced himself and he stuck out his hand and i said you're john cuneo and he kind of smiled and he said that's happened to me before and i said yeah you look just like your artwork um, <laughs> right. and i knew what he looked like because i follow him and everything yeah it's and the I nose told, yeah. i told him a story which he knew that, that it was true because my father started following him and uh, they had shared, I guess, shared messages. But um, I, my dad was convalescing in the hospital about a year before he passed away and really down. And I was just trying to do anything to try to make him feel better, playing cards with him, hanging out, talking art. And I was going through my Instagram feeds and I said, dad, do you know this guy? And I handed him my phone. I could not get my phone back. He <laughs> fell in love with Cuneo's work. And then he said something that was so telling. He said, you know, a lot of guys have good ideas. They're funny, but there's very few people that draw funny. And he said, he draws yeah. funny. <laughs> he said his line, yeah. everything works to his advantage. It's so beautiful. Such a good drawer. That's really well said. Yeah. yeah. It's uh Yeah, I couldn't do that. That stuff is. Now that's yeah, that's that's a different mindset from what I do. Yeah, I I I, I stress out about Hey Ray, let's say life. Ray, let's go ahead and say this. I doubt he could do what we do either. <laughs> don't don't tell know. that to anybody. Don't, don't, don't repeat that. You know what? This is what's funny is John, and you'll you'll get a kick out of this because you you know we've dealt with this. Is we'll post a tasteful nude figure drawing, and someone will report it on Instagram, and, it'll get <laughs> and then I'm scrolling through, and I see John Cuneo. <laughs> I see what he posts, and I'm like. Do we just have the wrong audience? What is, how is this happening? <laughs> how does he get away with that stuff? Yeah, I was like, damn. Like he knows somebody or something. Yeah. I, I don't. He got like because a even the censor thinks he's funny. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, they they right, want to right, see right. more. Yeah. I was like, does he have like an office at Facebook? Like this, this is this is absurd. <laughs> he's, he's definitely breaking the rules. Yeah, but yeah, we we've had like. Just like the most tame images get flagged. You're like, really? Yeah. We've had probably, probably you, back right? views of nudes get flagged. Yeah, it doesn't. And we're very actually, I will say we're very thoughtful with that because we know we've got, you know, all we've got a lot of followers of many ages, but 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 John is off the rails. <laughs> it's like, I mean, he I, knows his audience. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but I, I wonder if it's like we're getting flagged because 
they're flagging us for the drawings not be very good or something. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's not because of the nudity. Oh, yeah, it was flag, a quality flag. It's yeah, a quality. It's a quality control issue. <laughs> yeah. Kind of flag this on it. Could have been better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could have been better, right? That it makes you. It, it says like, why did you flag this? And it says like, it was offensive. It spam. It could have been better. <laughs> that would be so so funny. Their use of their use of material was really poor. The visual yeah. state was awful. <laughs> that would be yeah. it. Would be so do it from a, an artist's perspective. Yeah. They had no oh, design man. sense. <laughs> Please double check that leg length. It looks a little long. Yeah. Uh, I'm not drawing the legs. Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that's what I, that's that's what i would flag for a head drawing you know yeah. head looks a little short the legs look a little short you know although i have stretched her head out a little bit but i'm still not going to get to the legs oh round to the third one i didn't even realize that yeah right i'm almost done jesus ray you've been gone a really long time and we i don't know that we've told you this but we only do three poses now really yeah. yeah, we do a, we do a longer third pose. Oh, yeah, so you stick with it as long as you want, Ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, this is great. <laughs> and so I, I put the fourth reference in there, and so you have options of one or the other. Okay. Like you already rolled the dice though, so. <laughs> ah, just I, I'll do another one. You know, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do now. Where do I continue? I'll continue on this. This is great. This is like Timmy minutes to the max for those season oneers, you know. Yeah. Well, it was this funny moment where we had a week where we just weren't getting to the last one, and then we're all like, "Yeah, let's just not." And we, everybody with the crowd, was kind of cool with it. And then we were kind of like, they put a vote in, and we're like, "Let's just uh, let's keep the format. It's kind of nice." <laughs> Who, who do you think the one person that would take the opposite argument? I'm asking I, would, I would say Chris Payne. You got it right there. Yeah. I don't get Chris it. Was, I got yeah. plenty of time to do all these things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I could see Chris saying, like, I wish there were more. My, my <laughs> response was like, maybe we could even consider two. <laughs> Just do it two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, oh, uh, man. actually, actually, Chris likes it. Yeah. Because well, really, then he could probably just another reason for him to show off. What does he do? Does he whip out the uh, yeah, he's gonna the washes have, he's, and stuff, yeah. you know? Of course. Oh, man. It was a couple of months ago. I was like, it's eight o'clock. Let's I, I want to watch an episode. I want to watch an episode of Mary East Town. <laughs> <laughs> I finally watched that, by the way. I like that show. Oh, it was really good. And I get your comment about the Bronco. I agree. Why does he have a Bronco? It, it was absurd. It was the biggest mystery in the whole show. It really was. I don't get it. And so I was like really aware of the Bronco because you talked about it before I saw it. And then I was like, yeah, that, that makes zero sense. They're like this... This downtrodden kid is driving a $90,000 classic car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And talking about how expensive things are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't have the money. They were like, we don't have the money for the surgery, but it was like, just like, just like sell the door handle on your Bronco. <laughs> I was like, and his car just looked extra shiny as he complained about it. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, what show is this? Mayor of Easttown. Mayor of Easttown. Okay, I think I've, I've heard of it. It's on HBO. Kate Winslet. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes. Well, it was fun because I watched back to back. I watched Hacks first, and then I watched Mayor of East Town, and Jean Smart is in both. And you see her be two very different people, and she's just. That was so great. Really talented. <laughs> I, I watched those basically at the same time as well. Cassandra is so great. Yeah. Oh, I gotta say, Hacks, I did, not... did that have you cringing a ton? Yeah. That was really hard to watch sometimes, but I loved it. It's like, that's some poor decision-making you keep making. I know. 
It's so great though. Although, it is. You know, I've been tuning into like I love HBO shows, but then I I've started to realize now now HBO is not a place of like like I feel like it used to be like if you turn on HBO like whatever HBO did was amazing, mm-hmm. and now you turn it on and it'll be like it, they were like trying to pitch like a child doctor show something like Doctor Doctor Kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm talking about what is it called it, yeah yeah and you're just, the, what, i was just like come on yeah you know what's going to happen <laughs> um because i was I just i listened to an interview with david chase the the guy who wrote sopranos mm-hmm. and it was fascinating i had no idea i mean i knew sopranos changed television but i mm-hmm. didn't realize that hbo just was not what it is until that until that right oh wow, yeah their their claim to fame at the time was their first directed uh their first produced movie which was about the uh jay leno um uh, Wait, Wait. letterman letterman thing before uh the johnny carson uh really show like who was taking over and yeah. stuff you know you have i don't know if this is public but right 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 you you've got like some personal ties right to HBO, With who? don't you? Have, oh, don't you have a history of some sort? I don't know. No, uh, yeah, but I had a, uh, I have a family member that that works at HBO, so they would always uh, tell me what was co- uh, coming out, the movies wise and stuff. And so, uh, yeah. when, but when HBO went to their own programming, it was a big deal because it was like, no, no, you you guys do sports and boxing, just stick with that, you know? Yeah. Well, and, if anybody uh, wants, like, kind of, I thought it was a heartwarming story. Because David Chase is this individual who, if you think about it, you would think he's this like person that got everything he ever wanted. But I didn't realize like all the only thing he wanted to do like his entire career was make a movie. That was like he wanted to do that so badly and he got stuck in television. And then he's kind of single-handedly responsible for like making television movies <laughs> yeah like the mini series yeah. movies you know Which is now the, the place to be it's the place to be he like completely flipped the script on the whole you know it was very like i thought it was very sweet because he doesn't even seem to be aware of that that he like manifested what he wanted i, I don't know it was it's really very special story i thought so so is it like a documentary about him or what, no, what is an interview it's just an interview with him and he's just talking about how badly he wanted to do movies and um wow. and i think he was just he's just doing press in support of like the new sopranos film oh cool and oh this is sopranos film coming out oh yeah, yeah. Is it's, it it's supposed to be about like the main character as a young boy and it's his actual son playing him as a young guy. Wow. Wow, that's kind of meta. Wow. Yeah, yeah, very meta. <laughs> yeah. The mini saints of Newark. I thought you said meta because no, that was his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I really, love, like I really love like I really love late bloomer stories, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that definitely felt like one. I mean, even though he was like making, you know, big television productions and stuff but well yeah i mean like it was that like george r martin is another person it sounds like same thing right he had just wanted to get into movies and or he wanted to get into what was this whole deal like he wanted to get into tv writing and nobody would read his stuff and so then he decided i was like i'm just gonna write books then I'm, i guess i'll go into publishing and then he wrote game of thrones yeah and then, you know they asked him if he would be interested in writing television you know like what yeah you know yeah what do you guys no, think I, about the new lord of the rings series where each episode is like a hundred million dollars or something ridiculous like that i heard i heard about that that's like that's crazy yeah I, that's that is either going to be incredible or the the biggest cautionary tale that we like that will probably be either be like incredible or the end of streaming as we know yeah, that's it, basically what i'm seeing yeah. it like yeah you know, Bezos can't go to space again because this failed. 
I, I was just going to say, I was just going to say if entertainment is so important to us that we're like, oh, about a billion dollars that can go into <laughs> yeah. science and research. No, I'd rather see, a, uh, I'd rather revisit the Lord of the Rings story. I mean, but it's about the Cimmerillion though. Yeah. yeah. No, well, they like, no. someone actually calculated how, like how expensive each minute was. And it was like, like over a million dollars per minute. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what a shocker they're behind schedule. Yeah. So they budgeted, that. Up. they budgeted. Yeah. That they... Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I get the feeling of, I don't know if anybody else gets this is, is when, like when, when they, it's like them going to Lord of the Rings coming to Amazon prime feels like Spider-Man going on Broadway. Like, Right. Yeah, remember yes. what, right. It's yes. it's like we have the best people working on it. We're throwing the most money at it. This cannot fail. Yeah, and, but hey, whenever I think of the Spider-Man on Broadway, do you really think that seeing it live wouldn't have been maybe one of the most entertaining Broadway shows? Yeah, it totally, yeah. But the fact yeah. is that like it so I that's what I'm worried. Like Lord of the Rings is gonna be so crazy to see. But no one's gonna watch it. Like they they're gonna they can't recoup their costs and and like you know they'll have like you know people getting hurt or like you know like when in Spider Man like the the guy fell like the harness yeah snapped and he like was hospitalized in a preview show like yeah and uh, yeah I mean it's just just well, crazy like several, stuff you know several people were it wasn't just like one guy like I think right. in one show I want to say it was something like. Th- they really have to dig into the multiverse. <laughs> <laughs> Who do we got? Who else have we got? We, we, they were going through all the Spider-Men in the multiverse. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's, it did, I will say, it, it, it did sound cool. It was like, is this like the Cirque du Soleil of Broadway musical? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah totally. And, 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 you know, the ed, was it The Edge uh, from U2? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like your comic books, right? Yeah, comic book. <laughs> Yeah, just tons of money. This was, I think, and before Disney, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So that is pre-Disney money. So I don't know. So I don't know. I'm I'm hopeful. Hey, I want I want this stuff to, to do well because you know I'm into yeah. it and I, and I want nerd culture to uh to survive, you know. I mean, I remember the dark times. It'll be a whole new generation of kids that get to see it, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean. But you know what, right? Like I was just as we were talking earlier, I was like, man, I wonder when Brian K. Vaughn is gonna do Saga the miniseries. Cause like that, but then I was like, oh, I can't even imagine. I the budget, HBO. The budget it would take <laughs> to do that would be insane. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I I wonder. Or it would be really cheesy. It well, that's well like you know, Sandman is just about to come out, right? Yeah, Sandman's about they, and then uh, Jupiter Ascending, you know, they they handled that pretty darn well, I thought. Jupiter I, Ascending, I read that. Channing Tatum, yeah. With whom? With Tatum. Channing Tatum. With Tatum? was Chan Tatum? In? No, yeah. was he in Jupiter Ascending? Yeah. Who I was he? I didn't know that went well. Hey, Timmy, can I interrupt and say? Oh, we're, we're about done. done with this pose. Yeah, we're probably, yeah, we're getting too excited. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to, so um, everybody, we're going to wrap this up. John's going to draw for a couple, well, John's going to open up Instagram soon, but please post your work. Be sure to post it using hashtag illustration and uh, at Visual Arts Passage. Uh, do it now. Don't wait. I want to see Raymond's uh PC has been working on. Um, no, well, I, I deleted it, so I'm sorry. Oh, come on. I can see it. <laughs> Timmy, you want to bounce around the room and then we can. Yeah, let's do that. Stop. Oh, that looks here. really good, John. That looks great. That's awesome. Cool. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm still it's not quite her. So, yeah. 
Awesome, Ray. Nice, right, Ray. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, screaming poses are tough. They're really hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of avoided that one for that reason. <laughs> I was like, why do you think? Why do you think it is? Because what I think makes it has sense? to do. It, it, you could. Uh, I mean, you have to get the angles of the mouth right because it's just the way that stretching happens, and mm -hmm. uh, you could make it look like someone has a fat lip because you have a lot of overlapping between the inside and the outside of the mouth. And, yeah. The teeth are hard too to make the them teeth, like yeah. in the jaw with the lips over. Yeah. I just so, always think of uh, teeth in like bad tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I got to paint on cardboard. I got to join me. Cardboard time. Yeah. I got to do that. I got to bust out the the paints next time all right so we're are we looking at some instagram stuff we're about to okay cool I'm giving them like another few seconds here uh, okay john i love those uh uh that uh landscape that you posted that was a demo you had said yeah, it was for my foundations class. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thanks. I was trying to, I was trying to uh, uh, summon you, uh, trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you drop your palette and stuff? Like, I, I think I dropped, like, did I drop, almost drop my palette during my studio bridge uh, thing? It looked like a slight uh, bump. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We got some really good stuff to look at here. I believe it. I'm refreshing one last time. Yeah, we're only we're also only seven. <laughs> we're only seven uh, posts away from ten thousand drawings. Wow, what? which is amazing. So, hold on a second. Come on. <laughs> I rebooted Instagram. Yeah, here we go. You never know what you're going to get, Timmy. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I'm going to tell you when you get to the last one because there's some junk posts. <laughs> there's like some photos of people. I know. The people are sneaking in on our hat. <laughs> They're just, yeah. Check some of wow, stuff. that's great. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Beautiful, like, and the color. Beautiful. Great expression. Yeah. Oh, look at this. That's, oh, really that's nice. nice. That's yeah. very cool. Okay, I saw, this was the first piece I saw when I opened up. Oh, that's great. Beautiful. Beautiful piece. Yeah. Really, really good job. Nice. Oh, you had a good night. All your pieces are looking great. It's Devin? Yeah. Nice, Devin. Very nice. cool. Oh, cool. Whoa. Nice, Tyler. I like the little color palette at the top. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. It's some good stuff in here. Yeah, people got that attitude of the pose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a good, everyone's getting that posture. Yeah. Wonderful contrapasta right there. That's great. Mm -hmm. Nice. Very good. This is fun. Oh, really nice, Randy. Nice, Randy. Oh, I love all the texture around it. There's a good scream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They drew with us in Studio Bridge this morning. They're warmed up. Oh, really nice. Good stuff. Yeah. So many good things. Oh, I like the mashup. Oh, oh montage. Yeah. That's great. Check this out. That's like a movie poster right there. Oh, Rebecca. Yeah. Really nice. Wow, Rebecca. Nice. 
Hey, did you get the reference early or something, Rebecca? <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So good. Yeah. Oh, these are great. Nice. Nice. I know who that is. Uh, nice, yeah. I, I could tell That's from the scary. thumbnail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I've I've uh, confused it a couple of times. Sometimes I confuse not that their work looks that much alike. It's just down small by uh, Julian's work. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I'm surprised they haven't banned Gary yet. That's uh oh really AJ, good. I love it. I love it. That's another Gary. Oof. Nice Gary. Oh. Hey. Nice, Marcy. Nice. Wow. That is really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's AJ. Oh, That's nice. very cool. I can't look at that. That's fun. Awesome. I feel like there's like a nose. Doug Bell. Doug right, Bell. Doug. That's pretty loose for Doug Bell. I like it. Hey, I wouldn't have seen that one as Doug's. Yeah. I got a Doug Bell. That's Doug cool. Bell. You know what, Doug? Just don't. Okay. <laughs> Can you just sit one out, please? Is there a football game on or something, Doug? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Entertaining yourself somewhat? Look yeah. This. this is awesome. <laughs> Love it. Oh, way to Age go. Four. That, 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 that four. is a record. Wow. Age four. <laughs> you, know, you know the rule that you can only put your, uh, of course, I'll be 80 when this happens. You can, <laughs> when you go to double digits, you got to, you got to quit putting your age on there. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to put, refuse to put 60 on my drawing. No, I think you should. <laughs> <laughs> these are so great oh i know who that oh, is oh nice oh yeah look at that nice. oh, wow. look look john no age <laughs> that's right i know i told her she couldn't do it when she turned 10 she's listening <laughs> these things are beautiful yeah let's see still got it and then yep. some wow wow look at some of these, oh, these that's so cool. great oh that's really cool that's so cool. First time joining, awesome. Well, that's great. Yeah, thanks for joining. Yeah, keep keep joining. <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh, I like the one next to it. Yeah, the collage. Oh yeah, cool. That's cool. They look like they have. Uh, they're approaching like Pratt with the uh, putty knife. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's fine. Oh, really nice. So good ones. Nice, yeah, Rebecca. That's, great. that's Rebecca again. Yep. She good you. night. She got, oh, here we go again. Look at that. Really wow. cool. That's really interesting. Oh, that reminds me of those ink drawings. Do you remember those scary story books with those illustrations? Yeah, I know exactly. Hmm. They're haunting stories. Yes, and those illustrations are amazing. That made me think of that. I remember those those stories. I have gave me nightmares. Just the oh time. yeah, just get a totally a little arrow on that. There we go. Oh, always get us with the phone. Oh, yeah. Not half the time. With <laughs> <laughs> <Not laughs> the effort. <laughs> nice. Oh, look at that. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. All three of these are terrific. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Great. That's Mike. I know who that is, Peter. Oh, yeah. I oh, knew this was wow. going to be a fun night for it. That's good. Mm hmm. Oh, cool. Nice. Very good. Well done. Mm hmm. Sorry, I, I could just click on all of them. I'm supposed to be spreading it out. I just can't do it. 
<laughs> That's a good problem to have, John. You know? Yeah. I got plenty yeah. of bad problems. This is. <laughs> That's great. I love that one. It's fun. That looks cool. Yeah, like, That's darn, cool. everybody did such a good job. We need to look at them all. I know. Check this out. Oh, wow. very nice. Very, very, very nice. That's interesting. Got the paint out. Oh, I'm, I'm black. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Oh wow. Just as we're at, just as nice we're wrapping things up, I just want to remind everybody. Interesting. I, as we're wrapping things up, I just want to remind everybody: uh, enrollment closes October second. If you had fun drawing with us tonight, I guarantee you're going to like our mentorship classes. Uh, I just dropped a link. Uh, go check it out. Um, highly recommend checking it out uh john is offering free portfolio reviews right now uh, oh that's cool marcy take that's it really well done yeah john does a great portfolio review i took him up on that offer <laughs> <laughs> didn't have much to say i wanted your opinion oh that looks really good randy that's the beautiful class, the classes are uh 9.99 um, but we actually just have, we have Shopify payments available. So you can break that up, um, into a bi-monthly payment. So, and it's uh, not, it, those classes have a huge amount of interaction. It's not a three hour class. It's three hours on, uh, the homeroom, three hours in the uh, study hall. You got an open drawing here, and then you got the Slack channel all week long with your mentor. It's an immersive interaction it's a fully immersive experience um you're going to have a mentor that you have a relationship with as you develop your portfolio nice Thanks, Anna. Anna. wow nice jeff that's cool i keep i can't i keep keep clicking oh that well, was cool. i mean I don't, I don't blame you john these are like Last two. Look at that. Really nice. Awesome. Yeah. What a great night. Oh, fun drive. Oh. Nice, Beth. Yeah. All right, really everybody. Cool. This was great. Uh, Thank you Timmy, so much. What, what we say. Thank we, you, everyone. Timmy, we blame this on you in study hall. We use the, the line is always be re enrolling. <laughs> always. <laughs> always be re enrolling. <laughs> ABR. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody ray thanks yeah. so much for coming in it's great to see hey, you this uh, is great uh, great 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 to be back i really do thank you yeah, i miss you guys too thank you everyone uh, cassandra thank you for so much for being here timmy oh, yeah. and then uh terry i know you've already left but thanks for being here very fun night um and hope to see you all next